Hey, today we're talking about highlight tone priority and auto lighting optimizer. What? It's all on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey everybody, welcome back. Here I am, of course, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. Don't forget to go to AskDavidBergman.com, ask your own questions there, and I will answer the best ones right here on a future show. Today I have a great question from Carlos S. and he asks, do you leave highlight tone priority on or off? Okay, so highlight tone priority, what we're talking about here, this is a setting inside Canon cameras. Every uh, brand of uh, camera has its own setting that's kind of similar. Nikon has one called active delighting, but this in particular is with Canon. They all kind of work the same way, but they each camera company has its own special sauce, how it exactly works behind the scenes. But generally what we're talking about is dynamic range. Every camera has a limit of what it can capture from the brightest brights to the brightest brights to the darkest darks. And so we have to choose where which part of the scene that we want to capture with that limitation. Everything has some kind of limitation. Our eyes actually do a great job. They have a really high dynamic range. It's actually our brain that's interpreting what our eyes are seeing to sort of bring down those highlights and bring up the shadows so that we're actually seeing more of the detail in the brightest brights and the darkest darks, but cameras can't do that quite so well. So again, we have to make a decision on where to uh, expose that image. Now, let me say, we're just talking in this situation about JPEG images. When you shoot JPEGs right from the camera, we're gonna get to RAW in a few minutes, we'll get there, but right now we're just talking about the JPEGs saved right from the camera. So to demonstrate, let's go in Photo Mechanic here. Now I've got three images I shot earlier today. These are all at the same aperture and ISO. I'm at 5.6 at 200 ISO, and all I did was change my shutter speed so that I could brighten or darken the image. Now you can see this is the garage outside, and it is one side's being hit by the sun directly, and it's really bright. The other side is in shadow. It's not being hit by the sun directly, just has some ambient light on it, so it's much darker. Now this first exposure is at 4,000th of a second, and with that exposure, I was able to expose for the brightest parts of the area over here, and I was still able to get some of the detail, right? You can see all the little cracks and crevices in there, and it really uh, is exposed properly. But the other side is super dark, right? You really can't see much of what's going on in there. Now, the other side of the coin, I exposed at 800th of a second, which is a much slower shutter speed. That's gonna brighten the entire image. You can see the shadow area now is much brighter. It may be even a little over, but it's, it, never, it is much, much brighter, and we can see detail in there but the highlight area, the bright area, has no detail anymore. We've completely blown out that detail. So that's a problem, right? We really wanna find a balance between those two exposures. So in this case, I would split the difference and shoot it at 2,000th of a second. That's right in the middle, roughly, and it's gonna give us all the detail in the bright area and also enough detail in the shadow area. Now, the thing is, if our image had more contrast than that, if it was even brighter, let's say a blown out sky while we're also shooting uh, a landscape photo or something, that might not, you might not be able to find a middle exposure where you can get both. So that's really where highlight tone priority comes into play. What that setting does is it just takes your highlights and inside the camera, before it really does too much processing, it's gonna pull down those highlights just a little bit without affecting the shadow area. In my exposures here, I was moving the entire uh, exposure so the shadows are getting darker while the highlights are also getting darker. What Highlight Tone Priority does is it just pulls down the highlights without affecting the shadow areas, which can be really, really useful. Let's go into Photoshop here and I'm gonna show you the effect. So this first image, that's my 2,000th of a second, my proper exposure roughly, um, and then I have layered on top of it, I have the, when I shot at the enable setting, which puts a D plus on your screen on the top so that you know you have that on, you don't wanna forget you have that on if you wanna make sure you turn it off the next time. So with that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lay that on top. This setting now is D plus, and if we zoom in, you can really see subtly, very subtly, that's without and that's with, you see how this area gets just a little bit darker, but the shadow area really doesn't change. That's without and that's with. It really just brings it down just a little bit. It's a subtle difference. And then there's another setting, the enhanced setting, that's D plus two, and it even shows more. I'm gonna turn that on there. It really is subtle. It's hard to see. We can definitely see a difference from D, uh, without it and then to D2. We definitely can see that come down. Like I said, it's a subtle difference, but it just pulls down those highlights 
just a little bit. You want to avoid clipping those highlights whenever possible because once they're blown out, if they're gone, those highlights are gone and there's no detail, you're not going to be able to pull it back from a JPEG, right? That's If you're shooting JPEG, that's it. It's saved just like you shot it and you really can't do, you can't pull back something that wasn't there before. Now, there is one other setting in there that you didn't ask about, Carlos, but it's a very similar setting called Auto Lighting Optimizer. And really what that is, it's kind of the opposite. And that doesn't touch your highlights and really pulls up your shadows a little bit. So here's the similar, the same scene with uh, that, that without anything applied to it in Photoshop and then layered on top of it, watch the shadow area down in here, right? Back over here on the right, we've got, if I go to low, and then ignore the perspective change. Obviously I was hand holding this, so I'm trying to make them look as similar as possible. That's low, that's standard, and that's high. You really can see the difference. If we zoom in here, you really can see the difference. That's with auto lighting optimizer on high, and that's with it off. You really can see how it just brings up a little bit more detail in that shadow area, essentially expanding your dynamic range. It gives you more ability. It gives you a wider dynamic range that it captures and brings into your image. So um, it really can be useful in some situations. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's a lot of debate about RAW files, okay? Let's get into it just for a second. We've been talking about JPEGs here. The raw file, if you save raw, which I hope you do, if you're shooting raw files, that captures all of the data from the sensor. So it is the most data you can possibly capture. And it, it, does, it does capture parts of your dynamic range that are outside of what you see in that JPEG and even what you see initially on the screen. So a lot of people like to say that things like auto lighting optimizer or even picture styles and sharpening and other similar settings like that, that they... Um, they do have an effect on the raw file. Now, it's kind of a semantics thing because they really are not applied inside the raw, raw file. They're not embedded in there in a way that you can't remove like it is with a JPEG. With a JPEG, you can't remove it after the fact. But if you're using, let's say, Canon's proprietary software, the digital, digital photo professional software, um, what it does is it selects that auto lighting optimizer, for example, and applies it, but you can take it off, right? So let's go into... DPP here, Digital Photo Pro. This is an auto lighting optimizer on high image. And you can see over here that it actually is already applied. So right here, it's applied by default on the strong setting, which equals the high setting on the, um, when you shoot it that way in the camera. But you can turn it off if you want. You can take it off. That's the difference. It's not it's not actually saved in any way in the raw file other than the metadata saying that when you open it in Canon software, it will recognize that you shot it that way and will put it on by default. I can actually prove that it's not applied, it's not, doesn't change the raw file in any way by just opening it in any third-party software. If you go into any third-party software like Photoshop or Capture One that doesn't read all that Canon proprietary data, you'll see that even if you have auto lighting optimizer or um, highlight tone protection um, priority applied, those will not be applied in that program. Um, now, do you wanna use this or not? That's the big question, right? Here's the thing, I'm a control freak, I shoot raw. I hope you shoot raw also. I like to, go, I use Capture One for all my editing. This program, this is the, uh, the image in Capture One without, it's the raw file without anything applied by default. Here's the thing, Capture One has this high dynamic range area right here, and you can sort of do exactly what the Canon system is doing, maybe not exactly, but you can do very similarly uh, what it's doing in post because the RAW file captures so much data outside of the original dynamic range that you can pull it back in. So if you use this high dynamic range and use the highlight slider, look at the, the bright areas here, and we bring that down, it's gonna lower those bright areas and not touch the shadow area. So you can apply that however you want. And the same thing with the shadows, you can bring those up however you want. And actually, if you look at the histogram up at the top there, you can see exactly what's happening. If we bring the shadows up, all it's doing is sliding the shadows up and not touching the highlights. Same thing with highlight, we can bring the highlight down without touching the shadows. Now, um, Capture One also has this white and black slider. What that is, it's actually more like highlight tone priority and auto lighting optimizer because it just pulls the little bit tippy top, the very top of the blown out areas and just pulls them down a little bit without doing it as drastically as highlight and shadow do. If we bring that down, it's just a subtle difference, right? You can bring it up too, of course. Just a subtle difference, very similar to highlight and shadow, but not 
quite as drastic. So here's the thing, again, the overall idea for both of these settings, it's kind of a slight HDR. It's a high dynamic range, not the kind of HDR like the art, the artsy style that people do where they go way over the top, but it just expands the dynamic range slightly to give you the brightest brights and the darkest darks. Now, how does it work in the camera behind the scenes? The Canon engineers, at least, will not say. I've asked them. They won't tell me. There's some kind of special sauce that's happening there. I've read a lot of things online about how people think this works, and they're just not true. It's all kinds of, there's all kinds of stuff happening at the sensor level that we really don't know exactly what it is. Now, a couple of things to be, uh, to note, right? When you have highlight tone priority on, your lowest ISO is actually raised from 100 to 200. You can't shoot at 100 ISO when you have highlight tone priority on. It just, it just raises that, that's a limitation. Um, a lot of cameras, most Canon cameras that I've looked into can't apply both highlight tone priority and auto lighting optimizer at the same time. That's just the way they're built, right? Now, are there any downsides to just using this all the time? Well, it could bring up some noise in the shadows, especially if you're shooting at higher ISO levels. Um, because it's raising those shadows up a little bit, um, you could bring in some noise. I've seen some reports of that. Um, it might be very subtle, but if that's your main concern, then certainly something to be concerned about. Also, it could slow down your burst speed. If you shoot fast bursts, 20 frames, you know, 12 frames a second, that kind of thing, it's doing a lot more processing, so it could slow that, that down just a bit. Um, in images when there, it, it doesn't have bright highlights in it, where you really don't need it, it could underexpose the whole frame, right? It's going to bring everything down because your, your, your frame is generally exposed properly. You don't need it, so it's going to just move everything down. But the, really the main issue with this is a loss of control. I hope you're shooting raw. I'm a raw shooter. I don't shoot JPEGs. If you're shooting raw, it's really a non-issue because if you're, you know, look, if you're somebody who shoots high volume JPEGs, maybe it'll help in certain situations where you're doing just thousands and thousands of JPEG images in a controlled environment and you need to bring down that highlight in every frame, right? It might be a good way to do it. Video shooters might find it useful in really high contrast situations if they're not doing any color grading. Hopefully, again, you're, you're sort of doing that post color grading where you can choose how much highlight and shadow you want. But if you're that kind of shooter, you want to run some tests and see what works best for you. I still prefer to capture all the data in the RAW file and control the look of my images or my video in post. I'm going to bring it into Capture One and adjust every pixel exactly how I want it from the RAW file, but that's just me. Uh, thanks, Carlos. I really appreciate you asking that question. Remember, go to AskDavidBergman.com, ask your own photo questions there, um, and I will continue to be doing these every week right here on Adorama TV. I hope you're a subscriber. There's so many great photo hosts, lots of great content on here. Thanks very much for joining me. I'll see you back here next week right here on Ask David Bergman. <laughs>